How's it going YouTube? Got 4 Star TCG here and today I am doing a long requested video uh, and it is how to pre-grade your Pokemon cards uh, for when you are sending them off for professional grading. Uh, mostly in this video I'm going to talk about PSA although I'll add some uh, I'll add some other things in there for other grading companies um, but in this video, I'm going to tell you not only about sort of the equipment I use for pre-grading, which is not that uh, difficult to obtain, but also the way that I go through each of these cards individually and how I look for flaws that could uh, make it lower in grade. Um, now, of course, I'm not going to be able to tell you what your specific card, whether it's worth a grading or not. That's a personal decision. Um, and I made a video on, you know, should I grade this Pokemon card? I'll link that up in the uh, up in the I card. But I'll in this video, I'll go over basically what common types of damage are and how to spot them and how to figure out possibly what grade your card might get based off of the common damage that you might have. Um, so this is going to be mainly focusing on the higher grades. Uh, differentiating between the lower grades is, is an inexact science, uh, so I'll be focusing on the higher grades here. Um, so first off, what do you need to pre, like what equipment do you need to pre-grade your cards? Uh, the most important thing I feel like is a strong light. Um, so I use like one of those twisty bulb things. It's got a very powerful white light. I use it to shoot videos and I also use it to pre-grade my cards. Uh, you want a very good light for when you are looking at cards uh, because you want to be able to look at all different aspects of the card from the edges to the corners to the surface, all of that stuff. You want that to be very clearly illuminated. Um, you want, I think the light is the most important part. You don't want to be doing this in a dark room. You don't want to be doing this with your house lights. You want to get, you want to purchase a powerful, uh, bright white light for the sole purpose of evaluating your card condition. Now, you don't need to buy a, you know, miniature sun. Uh, it doesn't have to be crazy expensive, but a light that you can uh, ideally put on a stand or something that's like a desk light that is very bright that you can use to shine on your cards um, and use that light to evaluate the condition. That's going to make seeing edge wear much easier. That's going to make seeing creases much easier. It's going to make seeing hollow scratches much easier. You really want that high-powered light. Um, what you don't need when you are handling cards, you do not need gloves. Uh, when you're pre-grading cards, when you're handling cards in general, there is no need for gloves as long as your hands are washed, as long as your hands are clean. Give your hands a wash before you pre-grade your cards. Um, you know, make sure they're not dirty and you don't need gloves. Uh, gloves can make it harder to handle cards because you, you know, you have less control. You don't know exactly where the edges of the gloves are, but you know very well uh, where your fingers are. Uh, because you're going to want to be analyzing these cards outside of their sleeves and raw. You don't want to be looking at a card in a sleeve. A sleeve can have scratches. A sleeve can have pinhole dents or something like that, and you don't want to mistake that for being on the card. Uh, a sleeve can also obscure things like hollow scratches that you don't want to, uh, you don't want to miss. So always pre-grade your cards out of the sleeve, pre-grade them totally raw, uh, get a strong light. So you don't need gloves. You also don't need a magnifying glass or a jeweler's loop if you're going to be submitting to PSA. Uh, PSA does not use those tools, so you should not use them when you are pre-grading your cards. Chances are if you can't see something wrong with the naked eye, neither will the PSA grader, um, assuming you are trained, of course. <laughs> um, if you are submitting to CGC, I know they do go over cards with jeweler's loops, so if you're trying to get that elusive CGC 10, might be useful to pick up one of those. But in general, for your sort of standard uh, PSA grading, you do not need a magnifying glass or a jeweler's loop when you are looking at your cards. 
So the equipment's fairly simple. Uh, just grab that light and that's pretty much it. Uh, make sure you have a good space to pre-grade your cards. You're not crowded. You can easily look at those cards and uh, determine their condition. So let's get into determining that condition. So there are four major aspects of your card's condition. Uh, they are centering, surface, edges, and corners. Those are the sort of four subgrades that are used by major companies that use subgrades. And even when companies don't use subgrades, they are looking at those four aspects to determine the condition of your card. So being accurately able to find damage wear on those four points is very important when pre-grading. So the first thing I want to go over is centering. Uh, so centering is fairly self-explanatory. Centering is how well the card's image is centered. So for example, I have an Umbreon EX here, Umbreon EX Full Art, and you can see that this is not well centered. The top border is much larger than the bottom border. So this card is off center. And when a card is off center, even if it's perfectly fine, you can get downgraded. For example, I have this ultra shiny GX Scizor, and I'll use a GX to sort of show off the GX centering. But the GX centering, you want to look at that outside silver border. So as you can see, the bottom silver much larger than the top silver. So that, that black box that rims the border, that's off-center. You see the black line almost touching the top of the card there, but at the, uh, at the bottom, it's not close to the edge. So that is an off-center GX card, and that's basically what we have here you can see the uh, border on the left is that silver side that's larger than the border on the right. So this card looked perfectly fine, uh, but because of that off-centering, PSA knocked it down to the mint 9 grade. Um, so the exact centering parameters are on, uh, on PSA's website, but something like, you know, a little bit of off-centering, like this Raichu here, uh, something like this Gallade EX Full Art as well. You can see here the right border is larger than the left border. Something like that, you're probably going to get knocked down by one grade. Um, so if, you know, that's if that centering was the only thing wrong with the car, these cars seem to be perfect in perfect condition otherwise. I mean, you look at this Umbreon, there's really not much on the back. Um, this is a pack fresh card. A lot of people like saying that if a card is pack fresh, then it's like guaranteed to be a gem mint 10. That's not correct. There can be issues like centering straight out of the pack, which can impact the condition and the grade of the card. Um, so just a little bit off center, like the Gallade and the Raichu and like the Scissor I showed, you're probably going to get knocked down by one grade from, for example, a 10 to a 9. Uh, this Umbreon, this is significantly off-center. That border is much larger on the top than it is on the bottom. So this might knock you down by two grades. So if everything else was perfect on this card and it would have gotten a 10, if not for the centering, this would probably bring you down to an eight. So you have to be aware of that centering. That's usually one of the first things I check when I'm looking at cards, because if the centering's off, then it doesn't really matter if the card is perfect in every other way, because it may not score that perfect 10 grade. All right. So the next thing to look at is the surface of your card. Uh, now the surface of the card is, uh, you can have multiple issues with the surface. The first issue that you can have is hollow scratches. So I have a Waylord EX here, English EX cards. They are very prone to hollow scratches. And as you can see, as I show it off in the light, right next to Waylord, right there, there are some scratches on the hollow of this card. So those are fairly difficult to see. If you hold the card like this, you don't really see them. You think, oh, that's a really nice Waylord EX. And it is, it's a beautiful card. But when you turn it in the light, you see those scratches running up and down alongside the, uh, the hollow there. And this is, you know, this is because I have that powerful light that's shining. I can see these scratches really easily. 
and I can see that they go pretty much all over the card. They're on the edge, they're on the border. Um, there are some significant hollow scratches on this card. So even though the back of this card looks pretty nice, right? That's probably a nine background. There's really not a lot of, uh, of edge wear, of corner wear on that card. These hollow scratches uh, are going to lower this card's grade. So if I were to grade this card, if it was just a couple scratches, that's probably going to drop you down by one grade from a 10 to a nine or something like that. Um, however, this has some fairly significant scratches. Uh, they're all over the card. They are pretty clear and defined. They go in all directions. You know, you see one going kind of horizontal there, a couple going vertical. Um, this might drop the card down by two grades, so maybe down to an eight uh, or even to a seven. <clears throat> so hollow scratches, especially on cards that are prone to them, like EX cards, which have this large, significant hollow pattern. Uh, stuff like Watsy hollows as well are very prone to scratches. They're also very prone to print lines, um, which are treated almost the same as scratches because they you know, look the same. Um, so print lines, looking at the card in a light, that's also going to show off any kind of print lines that you may see. Another issue that you might find with surface is creases and dents. Um, so even if the card is perfectly clean, you see this card looks really nice. Uh, unfortunately, there can be hairline creases and dents on a card. So for example, if you can see right there next to my thumb, there is a, I'm shining the light on it right now, there is a hairline crease in the edge of this Infernape 4 Level X. So again, you want to have that light, you want to look at the card very clearly and for a very long time, especially if this is your uh, first time pre-grading cards. Um, so even, you know, this you can kind of slightly see on the back as well. But sometimes the creases don't bleed through to the other side, and you're going to need to uh, going to need to look at the card very closely. But things like creases, things like binder dents, these are much more significant to the card's grade. Uh, at PSA, they will automatically drop you to usually a six or a five. A crease like this, this card would probably be a six. Um, However, if it was like a binder dent, a significant binder dent, you might get a five or a four. Uh, even if the other, even if the rest of the card is perfectly fine, that crease, that dent is going to bring the grade down uh, fairly significantly. So the sort of final thing, and these kind of go together, is edge wear and corner wear. Uh, so you're going to want to look at your card normally on the back, because that's where most of the wear is going to show up and you're going to need to evaluate its edges and corners. So, for example, I have this beautiful reverse hollow Jolteon here from EX Unseen Forces. Centering looks pretty good, maybe a little bit off, but not really significant. Surface looks pretty clean. Don't see a lot of scratches there. Don't see any creases or dents on this card, so we're good so far, but when we turn it over and look at the back, we can see, especially on the bottom there, there is some whitening along the edges. We see a, uh, a white speck, a white nick in that bottom right corner. We see some whitening along the sides and even maybe a tiny little bit along the top. So if your card has edge wear, corner wear, that kind of stuff, that whitening along the corner, Pretty easy to see on English cards because the back is blue. That is going to knock the card down. Uh, you know, even the tiniest little bit of corner wear or edge wear, for example, I have my PSA 9 uh, Salamence Delta Species. It's got the tiniest little bit of corner wear there. Got just a little bit in that corner that can knock you down from a 10 to a nine. So looking for that corner wear is very important. Uh, if you have a little bit of corner wear, maybe if you just had this and that was it, that might only knock you down by one grade. 
but the more corner and edge wear you have, the more likely it is that your card is going to be knocked down by several grades. Uh, so for example, this card with this wear along the bottom, along the top a little bit, I'd probably say this is going to be a PSA 8 if I were to submit it for grading. Now, Japanese cards, uh, looking at wear on those is a little bit more difficult um, because the back, the wear doesn't show up as clearly. So if I'm holding this card a little further away, you can't really tell exactly where all that corner wear is because it's not that sort of hit you in your face blue versus white. Uh, however, Japanese cards, they kind of, they still do have like whitening. They have a discoloration where there is wear. So we can see at the top right next to my finger there that there is some wear on that edge. Then we look at this edge right here we can see wear on that edge as well, that discoloration on that edge. That is going to knock down the grade. And again, similar to English, the uh, grade knockdown is determined by the amount of wear on your card. So if there's a little bit of wear, probably only coming down to a nine. Uh, if there's a lot of wear, it's an eight lower or you know even getting down into a seven or a six um, it's normally it's not too significant uh, if you're looking for wear on you know relatively mint cards you know if you if you see a card and it's destroyed you know it's not getting that high grade um, but looking for cards finding out that like nine versus ten difference finding that small spot of wear that might knock your card down from a nine uh, from a 10 to a 9 is a difficult thing, uh, and it's something that takes a lot of practice. Uh, Pre-grading your cards is not something that should be rushed. It's not something you should jump into uh, and say, you know, oh, I, you know, I watched this one YouTube video and now I'm an expert on pre-grading cards. No, it takes years of experience. It takes lots of uh, lots of trial and error to figure out, okay, exactly what does this wear equate to when I am grading my card. Uh, so, you know, it, it, I've been grading Pokemon cards for, you know, six plus years now. Um, and it has, you know, I still make mistakes. I still send in cards with dents. Uh, you can watch my latest PSA submission. I got back like a PSA five because I missed a dent on a card. Uh, you know, no one's going to be able to pre-grade correctly uh, for every single card, but hopefully this process can give you an idea of not only the tools you need, which are really not that significant, um, but also the key things to look out for when you are pre-grading your cards. So just remember centering, surface, edges, corners, uh, and keep in mind the, all sorts of the various issues that can present themselves uh, and make sure that you look over your cards clearly uh, before you send them off for grading. And again, you know, some people might say, oh, this Jolteon, I'd love to have that in a PSA 8. I'd grade that card. Again, based on the condition of what you actually grade is a personal decision. Um, but I made this video to hopefully give people an idea of, you know, given the condition of your card, what are the things to look out for that can lower the grade and what grade might you expect if you, uh, if you submit a card that, for example, looks like one of these in the, uh, in the video. So again, you know, there's a ton of disclaimers with this, you know, your cards are obviously going to look different, but I hope I've given you a uh, quick introduction to pre-grading your Pokemon cards. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and stick around for more videos.